Diana is a witch, she's an incredibly powerful witch. She's a historian, she's an academic, she's in love with Matthew de Clermont. Um, and the relationship is a complicated one because he's a vampire, she's a witch. The covenant says that we cannot be in love. Um, and so Matthew and Diana have to navigate lots of challenges and complications because of their love. The congregation are trying to control the Covenant, which says that there should be no interspecies mixing. In season one, we see a reluctant Diana. She doesn't want to own her history. She doesn't want to be a witch. She denies that aspect of her life and, in fact, finds out that she was spellbound as a child. Throughout the series, we see her really coming into her own and um, embracing who she is, her history, and uh, the magic that is just rife within her. In season two, we meet all these fabulous new characters, um, Father Hubbard. If you offer me your blood. I will give you my blood. Gallo Glass. What did you do? I may have intimated to the Chamberlain that we have a very desirable painting for sale. Sort of this like wild, jovial, long-haired, um, man who gets some giggles and smiles out of Matthew, the, the rare moments of joy we see on Matthew de Clermont's face. Jack, uh, we encountered in the second season. He was the young street urchin um, that tried to pickpocket Diana. Move those fingers even a hair and I'll have your ear, boy. Matthew, he's a child. We then took him in and, and, we, and we, he became like a son to us. Come on, open it. We had them painted for you. We look after them until we get back. And then we very painfully had to leave him when we traveled back, when we time walked back to, to modern day. Diana has gained incredible knowledge about her ancestry and has been taught by Goody Allsop all these incredible sort of spells and being given the confirmation that she is a powerful witch. It was a tree, not just a tree, a rowan tree. A crossing between worlds, a union of opposites. You are truly a weaver. What has happened at the end of season two is that Peter Knox has in fact killed Emily. So with season three, we see Diana and Matthew travel back to present day and, and having to deal with the ramifications of our actions and our love. We return from Elizabethan times and, and the world is slightly changed and the congregation are after us. There's so much for the audience to look forward to in season three because the love story does continue uh, and that's a, a spine for the series. But there's also Diana's magic, which she's gone on quite a big journey across season one and season two and found the teacher in Goody Allsop. I want to learn it all now. You must learn patience, Diana. And we have Matthew back in the present day after his journey, um, having to confront quite a few of his demons, and there's more to come in season three. There are still you know, vampires, there's blood rage, there's all of these things. Diana has revealed that she's pregnant. There's a lot of danger this season. Um, there's a lot to overcome. There's certainly tragedy, but it's about love. At the end of the day, it's love and how that triumphs all the time.